friction. That thing you feel when your two separated parents both come to your graduation at the same time, and the force that opposes objects in motion that are in contact. We all have a sense of what friction is, but why something is frictitious is harder to define. It turns out that scientifically, why something is so frictiony is like asking why water is wet or whether or not I will go bald when my deal with the devil runs out. We don't actually have hard answers. I think rock climbing is the perfect frame for this discussion today because for climbers, rubber and its friction can literally be life and death. Is this just another excuse to go rock climbing for work? It's, yes, it's my show. I'll climb if I want to. As we said, friction is a force between two surfaces in contact that opposes the direction of motion. But motion is relative, so there are two kinds of friction, static and kinetic. Static friction is the force without relative motion, and kinetic is the force with relative motion or sliding. In general, it always takes more force to overcome static friction than it does to keep an object sliding. And by simple experiment, you can start getting a sense of different materials and their frictitiousness. It's a word. Start with an object that has a material that you're curious about, then put it on a plane that's made of a material that you're curious about. Then simply start changing the angle of the plane slowly until that object starts sliding, until static becomes kinetic friction. Scientists actually use a version of this very simple experiment to start determining the coefficients of friction. These numbers, usually less than one, tell you what fraction of the normal force, usually an object's weight, is needed to overcome static friction and or to keep an object sliding. As you can see, materials like ice have some of the lowest coefficients, and rubber consistently has the highest. Coefficients can even get larger than one, meaning that it will take more than the weight of the object or the normal force to dislodge it or slide it along a surface. That's very useful when you're going around a bend at over 200 miles per hour. Oh, so fast, huh? The simple explanation that you may have heard about in school for why these numbers can be so drastically different is that each material has a different surface roughness. And we have an intuitive sense of this, roughness and friction. But upon further reflection and investigation, this explanation seems to break down pretty quickly. Though glass is a very smooth substance, glass on glass has one of the highest static coefficients of friction there is. Why is rubber so special? Why would a climber trust his life with the stuff? Whoa, is he crazy? That's the power of rubber, Aria. And yes, he's a little crazy. Today's episode is sponsored by Cool Shearers. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and professional meme lord, Kyle Hill. As a millennial living through the post-irony era of memes, I need all of my drip to accurately convey that perfect combination of apathy, self-deprecation, and abject nihilism. That's why I've been wearing the sponsor of today's episode, Cool Shirts, every day for the last month. Cool Shirts is a lifestyle brand that perfectly captures what I see as that funny feeling of modern life. It's a pastiche of 90s children's clothing, Gen Z Riz, and Web 1.0 chat rooms. High quality hats, socks, hoodies, oversized t-shirts that hide your body so that crippling body dysmorphia doesn't cloud every waking moment while at the same time giving you that fresh Billy Eilish look. Acid wash, tie-dye, dad hats that scream into the void for you. If you want to fit like this, go to the link in my description or the URL right here and use my code KYLE for 10% off. That's cool shirts with a Z and offer code my name. This world is pain. Wear a funny t-shirt about it. Rubber doesn't look all that rough, so why does it consistently have one of the highest coefficients of friction? Well, a climber might say it's because their shoes are soft, that they can deform around holds, and there's some truth to that. Rubber can deform more than most solids, and that matters because up closey close most surfaces aren't what they seem. Aria, enhance. Ew, do you even moisturize? Can you, can you just zoom in on the shoe, please? Thanks. Pretty much any natural, untreated surface, no matter how smooth it looks or feels, is actually a microscopic landscape of innumerable peaks and valleys. So when another surface comes into contact with it, their interaction, the friction between them, will depend not on the total apparent contact, what you can see with your eyes, but on the true contact of irregular surfaces. 
At human scale, it may look like two surfaces fully come together, but they may in fact not at the scale that really matters. For example, less than 1% of the total available surface area of your car's tires actually touches the road. Rubber seems to be so good at sticking to stuff, not only because it's rougher than it looks, but also because it's flexible enough to be pushed by weight and normal forces into the interstices of surfaces that other materials can't be. This all makes sense, right? More microscopic contact, more friction. But it can't be all there is to it. If it's all about surface roughness, then why do really, really smooth materials have some of the highest coefficients of friction, just like rubber? Why is glass on glass so grippy? Why will two perfectly smooth metal sheets cold weld in space? Well, one model that has gotten a lot of traction <laughs> is in this paper by B.N.J. Person. In it, he argues that it's not the surface of the rubber that makes it so grippy grippy. Rather, it is the viscoelastic properties of the rubber as a whole. Aria, enhance again. Do you even know what lotion is? It's, it's dry in here. There's a lot of chalk. What's interesting about rubber, something that all climbers already know, is that its friction is extremely temperature dependent. But what's more interesting is that the complex elastic modulus, the measure of the resistance to deformation, its softness, is temperature dependent in exactly the same way. Now, things get really complicated here, but the basic idea is that rubber is very good at dissipating the energy that sliding across a surface creates. But that energy has to go somewhere, so it goes into the deformation of the rubber and ultimately heat. This in turn changes the internal temperature and therefore internal friction of the rubber, which affects the overall coefficient of friction. This proves, Person says in the paper, that the friction force under most normal circumstances is directly related to the internal friction of the rubber, i.e. it is mainly a bulk property of the rubber. In other words, the stickiness of rubber has to do with the properties of the rubber as a whole and not just the surface. Think about that for a second. We all have some intuitive sense that when it comes to friction, the surface is all that matters. Is it smooth? Is it rough? But with rubber's unique ability among solids to change and deform, it actually matters more what's happening on the inside of your climbing shoe or car tires rubber than the outside. Now again, the proof of all this by Pearson is very complicated and, it must be said, the science is not settled. But I kind of like that. It means there's more science to be done, more things to climb, both literally and intellectually. And no, you couldn't pay me to do this. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join us inside the blast doors, strip on a silky white lamp cord. Get videos early, hear me sing, join our private discord, get private members only live streams with me each month. That's patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. Join us today. And if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here in every single video. And look, there's just hundreds and hundreds of you. I don't know how I'm going to possibly pass the time. So when you look at something like goats, which now have memes made around them, they can climb up basically anything. It's not exactly the same thing. The keratin of their hooves is very hard. It doesn't deform at all, very much unlike rubber. So what they're doing is putting those very hard, sharp-edged hooves into the tiny cracks in the structures. I may have been a little unhinged for this last part. Sorry. <laughs>